So a few days ago, I was uh, talking with a friend on Slack and he was having some trouble doing something like this. Uh, and I thought it would be like an interesting challenge to try it out. Uh, he ended up doing it uh, by himself, most of it. Uh, and uh, he shared part of it with me and then I adapted it uh, to my setup. Uh, because it actually took me some time to understand how to do a few things here. So uh, I'm just going to share this with you and, and maybe it can help you um, if you need to do something like this. So uh, basically uh, the, the first part is pretty simple, right? So I just created a group of spheres. I created a, a bigger sphere, created a volume uh, from polygons, VDF from polygons from that sphere and, that, uh, and then created like scattered some points and uh, with the copy to points created like this kind of sphere point cloud thing. Um, so then one thing that I knew straight away was that I would need to have an attribute per sphere because I wanted to use the pressure um, constraints and volume and I wanted each sphere to uh, you know inflate and deflate um, so I would need an attribute on each sphere that would just do that. Uh, so the connectivity node definitely helps you with that because it creates a piece attribute per sphere or per object. Uh, so, uh, well, it creates also a different value on that piece attribute. So you can see here on the geometry spreadsheet uh, what it's doing. So you can see that there's uh, a a few points like in this case 161 points that have the value 0 and then the next ones have value 1 uh, and so on so we have 20 spheres here this piece attribute will be really helpful um, in the next part so then I just created a nodes a color node uh, just also using that uh, piece attribute and you, you can see here how it, it works uh, with, with the color just gets a random color per sphere using the attribute and then I just created a vellum cloth which is the settings I have here are default basically and then um, I created a pressure constraints um, node where I just turned on the output group because I know that I want to you know, change the, the, the rest length of this uh, constraint node so I want this all these attributes or at least this attribute inside of this pressure group so I can change it instead of changing rest length for all of them at the same time right and uh, so and then I created just a vellum solver and if I go in and just turn off this um, I have a pop attract and a pop drag so I just attract the spheres to uh, the center and the drag just comes down the simulation a bit because it was starting to spin and all that. So the way we can change um, the, the, the constraint attributes on um, you know, per frame um, is uh, using this vellum constraint property. So there's way more, like there's loads of ways to do this, uh, honestly, but this is, you know, uh, the way that vellum gives us, uh, like the, try to simplify that process. Uh, so with this node, you actually have access to all the constraint attributes and here you can filter by what group do you want to change these attributes on and I want the pressure group. Um, that's why it's important to uh, come here and um, turn on this output group. So I just change those attributes on this node. So, uh, so then I could just come here and change the rest length. Uh, so if I play this um, so I just turn off the vex vex <coughs> excuse me so if I just change this see the pressure just changes so but I don't want to keyframe anything and I also want this to happen per sphere like a different pressure uh, on each sphere or a different rest scale on each sphere the way I found out that would be easier to do was using an expression and this is the part that actually my friend uh, had already done similar to this I just adapted so let's just go back first uh, and uh, so I need to create an attribute on each sphere 
that has a value of pressure uh, and that oscillates between uh, inside that value so between two values right so I want the pressure to be one at some point and to be 20 and at some point you know per sphere so I just created a point wrangle here and I will try to explain what this does but if if I turn it on uh, because I created a visualizer here um, for the random pressure to create this you can you can just press the plus and then choose what type of visualizer you want like in in my case is color and then you give it a name and uh, you you say what attribute do you want to visualize and then it creates it, uh, a visualizer for that attribute so which is here I'm gonna delete it um, so if I play this you can see that this code is actually generating a different attribute a different value per sphere that is oscillating between 1 and 20 like I have here so honestly I didn't come up with this alone and uh, my friend was actually GPT-4 uh, which is it, it's been really really helpful um, to help me learn VEX um, so if you want me to create a tutorial on that kind of showing my process I can do that so what do I have here um, so first of all I need I know that I want to w work with time right so I'm gonna create a, a, a value um, sorry um, a variable called time that it's equal to time to this variable and this variable is actually a variable that uh, Houdini has inside so um, this t uh, is is just picking up uh, the value from this timeline. So if I play, you know, this there's a there's a, uh, a number running here, and then I want to multiply it by something so I can actually change it, uh, make it faster or slower. And uh, uh, you know, the way to do that is to create a channel, give the name of the channel here, uh, and it creates this slider on the interface. Uh, so to create the channel, you know, if I copy paste this um, and uh, I just create a, a new variable here, like a float test variable, um, make it equal to a channel called like test also. Um, if I run this, if I just press this uh, icon, it will create that slider for me. This is really cool so um so i can just remove it now but like i, I will do that i will do this after so you can see uh, how, how useful this can be so then so i created that variable so i'm just creating variables now right and then um i want to create the noise the actual noise that that happens right so i'm for that i'm creating um a noise function so it's just a, a command uh, that that Houdini has, you know, like in in Vex, and then uh, the the noise number or the noise uh, um, basically, yeah, the noise number because I can just create a, a noise function and put a number here, you know, like one, two, three, four, and it creates like a random noise for me. But I want that noise to be controlled. I want to control that noise with a frequency, and here I just created another channel called frequency. Uh, and that frequency will be multiplied uh, by the piece value that I have. So th this noise will happen per piece, right? Per per you know per sphere, you know. So I'm using this uh, connectivity, th this this um, attribute that comes from the connectivity. Uh, so I'm I'm multiplying that uh, attribute by the frequency and adding the time, adding this value here. So it will run uh you know every frame right uh, so so then um i'm just creating that random pressure and making that creating a value for that random pressure using the noise that i just created and i'm here i'm i'm, I'm fitting that noise i'm, I'm just make, saying okay that noise value that i just created here uh will be between 1 and 20. so so now if I want to have more access to this, I can actually do what I've done here. I can come here, copy this channel, just put it here, 
and say min mean pressure max pressure right so parentheses here so now and okay that's perfect so now if i press this icon you know i create those values and it's now it's way easier to change right so you can put one here and 20 here so um, so now if I play this, you know, you can see that I can actually change, you know, the values easily. So now I want to bring this into the simulation. Um, and uh, it took me some time to figure out this. So let's see if I can explain it well. It's pretty easy now that I know. So this, I need to bring that value into this uh node right so uh, and then it will solve it every frame so my first um my first idea was okay so i need to bring it through an input and uh, i have the inputs tab here when you create the node this is the default uh, settings right uh, so i want to bring it through an input so okay this the, the that value is in SOPs, so I need to bring it through SOPs, right? Or I need to bring bring a SOP value or a SOP, a SOP attribute in. Um, so I've created this output here, and uh, now I can actually come here and pick the output that I want. So now I have the value in. So if I have the value in, I'm just gonna uh, turn off this. Uh, or comment these lines um, so I thought okay which attribute do I want to change um, I want to change the rest length scale and this parameter is called rest scale as you can see there on that drop down so I thought okay rest rest scale equals to the ran random pressure right which is the attribute that I created there. You know, it's this attribute here. And this makes sense to me. But if I play, that doesn't work. All right? And why is that? And with the help of ChatGPT, actually, he explained it to me. And to bring in a value uh, every frame you need a function so you, you need to question the points of the geometry that is coming in right so that's why I have this point uh, function here so this point function is questioning uh, that SOP that is coming in uh, those points all the points that are coming in through that out null right uh, through through this input and it's questioning them and it's saying okay so go to that specific input so go to input three but i have two here why is that you know so this is the input right on that command uh because encoding it starts every every sequence of numbers starts by zero like f from zero so it's like zero one two three four but in the interface it starts um on one right so the input three here it's zero one two so it's input number two so it will question all the points coming in through port number two or through input number two and it will find the attribute random pressure and then it will find that per per point number per every point right it will just basically measure the value of that random pressure on each point of that geometry that is coming in through input 2 um, so I create a, a variable with that value uh, and then here I can do what I was doing before I can um, basically uh, you know say rest scale is equal to press so 
feed that value into the rest scale basically um, and it will do it by frame because it will evaluate this function every frame okay uh, so that this is how it works so now if I play this uh, if you look carefully they will they are just changing size okay so I can just do this for other um, attribute actually I can now do this for the length of the cloth okay so I can do that easily because first of all I have an output group called stretch so I know that that's the output group that I want to change or, or that rest length is on that output group so I want to create another vellum constraint property uh, and say okay I, now these attributes will be only changing on this stretch group uh, and now um, if I come here I can create the same uh, uh, using the same noise function but create a new uh, attribute called random length with different values this is just from 0 0.5 to 5 so I don't want the cloth to actually go like huge uh, and now here I basically do the same line I've done on this one but I'm questioning the same points that are coming in but I, I want the random length attribute uh, and now if I play see the spheres are also they are growing because of the pressure but the cloth is also expanding so yeah that's it um, hopefully I was clear enough uh, let me know if you have any questions um, I hope but hopefully uh, this was useful for you as it was for me uh, and also this tutorial has helped me um, solidify the knowledge so um, it's good to do this and uh, see you in the next tutorial